What are higher order functions? By the end of this episode, you'll know what higher order functions are. You'll have some examples of higher order functions that you probably are familiar with, and you'll know why they are used so much in functional programming. My name is Eric Normand, and I help people thrive with functional programming. Higher order functions are an important way of getting leverage when you're programming. Um, they're used in extensively in functional programming. Um, we were always on the lookout for new uh, higher order functions to write. Um, and I think that they're like the second level of skill this is how I, I, I think of them. They're a second level of skill in um, functional programming. The first being seeing actions, calculations, and data. The second level, you start to think in terms of higher order abstractions, like higher order functions. So what are they? Um, higher order functions, pretty simple definition. Um, but, you know, the definition might not really reveal why they're so important. But here's the definition. Higher order function is a function that takes a function as an argument or and or returns a function as a return value. So it's a function, let's say a function about a function. Okay, it's a function that acts on a function, or it's a function that creates a function. Okay, so it's higher order because you could say, well, there's functions that just operate on values. Those are like low order. So we're talking about addition. We're talking about string concatenation. These take two strings, return a string. Uh, addition takes two numbers, returns a number. They're just, they're, they're low order. But then once you have a function that operates on a function, boom, you're getting to a higher order. I mean, whether they're better, you know, they're higher, like that's, that's not really what it's about. It's about um, the fact that it's about itself. It's functions about functions. That's what makes it higher order. All right, so some examples that you're probably used to already. Um, Map, filter, and reduce. Uh, those are common in a lot of languages now. They are functions, and they take functions as arguments. So map takes a function and a list or a, an array or something like that, and it applies that function. So map the function applies the function that you pass at the argument to all of the elements in that array. Uh, filter takes a function and a sequence, you know, an array or something, and uh, it applies that function and any of the elements that don't return true for that function will not make it into the output function, right? And then reduce um, is similar. It, it takes a function and an initial value and an array and it will call that function uh, on each of the elements in the array. So the common thing, though, is that they take functions as arguments, and that's why they're higher order functions. So why do we do this? Well, you notice you could solve the same problems uh, of map, filter, and reduce with for loops, but for loops have the advantage of being syntax in your language. So the body of the for loop, the stuff in the curly braces of the for loop is kind of privileged, right? This, the compiler is going to look at that code and say, well, I'm not going to execute it right away. What I'm going to do is every iteration through this loop, I'm going to execute this code. And so we need a way of deferring the execution of code until later. And one way you can do that is you wrap that 
code in a function, and then you make sure that you have all the arguments you need uh, to make that function work sort of out of context in some other place, right? And so we're encapsulating this code, wrapping it up in a function. And if your language has first class functions, then you can take that function and pass it around. And so we can make another function that says, well, I need to know what you want me to do to each of these things in the array, right? Like a map. And so pass me that as a function, and I promise I will call that function for each element in the array, and I'll pass it as the argument, right? So this is a way that you can pass code around. You can pass functionality around. Um, if, I, if I wanted to speak in, in my own terms, I would say you're passing calculations around, right? You're able to say, um, you're not just passing data, you're passing calculations. Uh, and so these calculations can then be run on different inputs, different arguments. Uh, so, you know, they let us take something that is basically syntax, like a for loop, and turn it into something that is um, not as privileged, right? That is... Uh, is first class like usually you can't pass a for loop around but if you wrap it up in a function you can um so you can also say that like at this point you can start reusing it right so map is is much more uh amenable to reuse um and it's going to give you shorter code you know people will talk about that i don't know if those are the really significant things though i don't know if it's so important that um that the map like when you call map it's shorter what's important is that you're able to operate at a higher level of abstraction so you're able to make functions that operate on other functions instead of having to write out all the code yourself okay um so you could write um uh just oh, just as an example like if you wanted to process an array four times with different code you could write four different for loops right and it does the first one and then does the second one and does the third one and then the, does the fourth one that's great you could replace all of those for loops with maps, right? And I would I would argue it's probably the same about the same amount of code. You haven't done any savings yet. But then now instead of because you're operating on the same array, now you can say uh, uh, the, right, the same right, the same array. You can say, "Whoa, I don't need to write out all these maps. I can put the functions that get passed to map into an array and because the functions are first class I can put these four functions into an array and then I can map over those and now I'm really saving some code right you're taking it to a higher level and uh, yes that's the kind of th the leverage that I'm talking about um, not something that I often see when I'm when I see people doing functional programming that taking it to that next level to say we don't need to do we don't need to write out everything we do we can have the machine do that for us uh, so often um, this is called um, meta programming so you're programming about programming because it kind of lets you get away with like not having like you kind of kind of like you're making a new syntax right like instead of a for loop which has a body you pass you're doing a map which has a function and so in the function it has a body so you're able to kind of do a little syntax uh, and you're able to program about programming um, functional programmers don't think that higher order functions they don't really call them metaprogramming they call them programming. That's just what you do. 
that is what programming is all about. It's about finding the right level, the right abstractions at the right level for the problem that you're solving. And sometimes that involves making higher order functions that operate on other functions. Um, so I do want to emphasize that you need first class functions to do this or something equivalent, right? You could have blocks, some, some places they're called lambdas. Um, you could do it with, uh, anonymous inner classes in Java, but now they have lambdas, so you probably don't need to do it. Um, all right, so let's talk about two more. Let's talk about functions that return functions because we talked about map and filter reduce. Those take them as arguments, but they don't return them. Let's talk about two common functions that return functions. Um, so one is composition. And in the last episode, I talked about function composition as a function. It takes two functions and it returns a new function that is the composition of the two. So you're actually making a function inside that function and returning it. This is uh, an example of returning a function. Um, you could say, I want a function that adds five to a number. So it, it, um, so you could write that function out, right? It takes x and it returns x plus 5, right? And then you write one, well, I need one that returns x plus 10. And I need one that returns x plus 100. So you could say, wait a second. I see a pattern here. I'm going to make a function that takes a number n or y, right? And it returns a function that takes an x. And then it will return x plus y. Okay, so you're, you're, you're taking a function, you're making a function that returns a new function. Okay, so now you're able to leverage this repetition into common functionality. Um, okay, finally, there's one, another one that you might uh, be familiar with, maybe not, but that's okay. So you have something like filter, right? And it returns true if you want to keep the, the function that you pass to filter returns true if you want to keep the element and it returns false if you want to eliminate the element from the array. But what if you want, you have like the function positive, right? You have a function positive, it's a positive number. It returns true if it's a positive number and, it's a and false if it's not positive. But you want the opposite of that. You want to keep all of the non-positive numbers and reject all the positive numbers. So you could call this function, you could make a new function that just does, takes an x and it returns not positive x. Okay, you could write that. And then you could also say, well, I want a function that um, tells me, I have a function that tells me if this is a capitalized string. So is capital. And, um, but I need a function that is the opposite of that, is not capital. So I'm going to make a new function called is not capital, and it will return not is capital X. And so you can, you can write all these functions that are just like the opposite of an existing function. And then you see the pattern. Whoa, I'm just calling, I'm just call, I'm writing a new function each time that's just the not of an existing function. So why don't I make a function that will do that for me? Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm operating at just a slightly higher level. Instead of writing all these functions myself, I will make the computer write the function for me. And so you could call this function opposite, or you could call it complement. And what it does is it takes a function and it makes a new function that just returns not of calling that function. And then that's it. Now you have a function called opposite and or complement or negate, you know, whatever you want to call it. And now you can use that and pass it to filter and you'll get your non-positive numbers out and eliminate the positive numbers. 
So that's an example of returning a function. You notice um, I, I, um, I, I did the ex examples so that you could see like, oh yes, this is something I would use a lot and I would want to be able to abstract that. This is what we're doing. We're abstracting these things that you could write yourself. You could write opposite, the opposite of capitalize or the opposite of is capital. You could write the opposite of is positive. You could write the opposite of a, of a bunch of functions all by hand, but this is a way of doing it automatically. Um, all right, another thing I wanna mention, last thing, is that in JavaScript, uh, if you if you program JavaScript to any amount, you have probably dealt with higher order functions. Yes, it has map filter and reduce, but anytime you're calling some kind of AJAX or some asynchronous operation, you're going to have a callback function. And so it's a higher order function. You're passing in a callback. Um, it's less common to return a function, I've noticed, from JavaScript. But you might have it in something like higher order React components where you're taking a component and returning a, or taking a function and returning a new function that's a functional component. It's possible. Just want to mention that. All right, let me recap. Uh, so a function, a higher order function is one that either takes an argument takes a function as an argument or it returns a function as the return value or both it could do both uh, some common examples map filter reduce uh, function composition complement or opposite uh, this this one that returns an adder that adds a certain number to it why do we do it um, really for uh, the ability to reuse um, that functionality that you would normally have to write out yourself. Um, you could say that it gives shorter code, um, but it lets you take a function and it, that represents functionality and use that in some other way. It's kind of a way to make what you might th normally think of as a new syntax. Uh, you can do that with just passing in a function because you don't need a block. All right. Um, you need first class functions for this to work. Like you need to be able to pass them as arguments, obviously. You might think of this as metaprogramming, um, programming about programming, but that's kind, it's kind of limited because um, this is just what programming is to functional programmers. This is just what we do. We write Sometimes we're writing a function to convert a string to a different kind of string. So it's just lower order, just value to value. And sometimes we notice a pattern and we say, oh, I can make this out of higher order functions. And if I just pass in this function, I will be able to uh, you know, eliminate this duplicated code or you know, this is exactly the kind of abstraction that will help my software, whatever it is. We just do that. We just do it naturally. We don't think of it as a separate activity like metaprogramming. And you're probably familiar with it with callbacks, um, but the returning a function is also an important thing too. Okay, so um, a little assignment for you that might help you s consolidate your learning. Um, do you have functions that return other functions in your code? You might. You might be able to find them. Um, do you have functions that take functions as arguments? Uh, and just look at those, find some examples in your code, and ask what they are helping you do. Like, why are they there? What is it about them that makes, that makes them worth having? Uh, right, so please do me a favor. If you've liked this discussion about higher order functions, please subscribe uh, because then you'll get more episodes like it as they come out. Uh, yes, that's all I have to say. If you'd like to get into a discussion with me, I love getting emails. Please email me 
at eric at lispcast.com. I try to reply to everything. In fact, I, I think I pretty much do reply to everything. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. I'm at Eric Normand with a D. And you can also find me on LinkedIn. So I'll see you next time.